So what are gamma rays? Gamma rays are electromagnetic radiation, which essentially means it's a color of light that we can't see. It's a lot like x-rays, like you'd experience in the hospital, except they pack a little more kick. And they can cause damage to us in high enough intensities, but fortunately, at low levels, we've got repair mechanisms because we're adapted to gamma rays. They're all around us. Our own sun is a giant gravity-driven thermonuclear fusion reactor, and we're getting radiation from that, in addition to all the other stars. Every pinprick of light in the night sky is another nuclear reactor, essentially. In addition to, there are natural radioactive elements in the Earth's crust and deeper, which are contributing a few gamma rays up from below, and together, these provide a gamma ray background, which is natural. There's a lot of misinformation out there about what radioactivity is, but basically, it's not mysterious, it's just chemistry. And it's the chemistry of overweight atoms. We're pretty familiar with the periodic table, so the difference between iron and oxygen and carbon, that all has to do with the number of protons in the nucleus of an atom. You can make different versions of the same element by packing on neutrons, which don't have a charge. So you essentially can have skinny iron, but if you add a bunch of neutrons, you make fatter and fatter versions of iron until eventually, that atom is overweight and it becomes unstable and it starts to try and shed parts of itself to return back to a more stable state. And that is radioactivity. They're emitting either bits of themselves or beams of energy to try and drop down. That's the way that they do that. That's called radiation. One of those types of radiation is gamma rays. So how do you detect gamma rays? You use something like this which is a general multi-purpose radiation detector. It uses a Geiger-Muller tube, which is sensitive to gamma rays as they pass through it. They emit an electrical pulse, which you'll hear is a beep on the meter. Every one of these beeps is actually a gamma ray passing through the probe, either delivered from space or from radioactive elements from beneath. I've got two mineral samples that are similar, one of which is radioactive, one is not. The first, malachite, is a copper-based mineral, which is extremely common. You could find something like this up hiking in the mountains. And as you can see, there's really no radioactivity built in it, which is not surprising. Next to it is a mineral called torbernite, which uh, is also copper-based, which is why it has a green color too, but it includes some uranium dioxide, and uranium is a natural, uh, fairly radioactive element. You can see there are quite a few gamma rays coming out of this thing. Each beep represents one gamma ray moving through the probe. So. How do you respectfully deal with radioactive material, natural or not? There are three principles, time, distance, and shielding. Time is simple. If you limit the amount of time you spend around something radioactive, almost irrespective of how radioactive it is, it doesn't matter because you're not receiving enough to make much of a dent in the natural radiation you receive during a year anyway. Two, distance. The intensity of radiation drops off really dramatically with just a little bit of distance, which you'll see here. Right next to the mineral, it's up there. But a few inches back, the activity drops off by more than a half. A few inches farther than that, it's down to one-tenth. And out by a couple feet, we're back to background levels. And third is shielding. You can actually put something between you and the radioactive source to shield the gamma rays. The thicker it is, the better. Radioactive material is natural. Radiation is coming from the sky above, the minerals underneath, and experience to some amount of gamma rays is basically the cost of doing business on Earth. So radioactive material deserves our respect, but it doesn't require our fear.